Welcome to 9.7's Math Moment. Today in sixth grade math, students worked on rational numbers on the coordinate plane. So they practiced um, graphing negative and positive fraction amounts on the coordinate plane, not only in quadrant one, which has both um, positive uh, axes, but also in all four quadrants of a coordinate plane, which includes both positive numbers and negative numbers. So we're going to work with both today um, because on your student's homework for lesson 9.7, they will have to work with both as well. So example one says, on the coordinate grid, an airport is located at point A. So point A, I have an airport there, and in point, points B and C are airplanes. So we're going to use those to help us answer the first couple questions. Number one says write the location of each point A, B, and C. So the first thing I need to do is go over and find point A and think about where it falls on the coordinate grid. So anytime that I am plotting a point or I am trying to find the ordered pairs that a point make, is made up of, I have to move on the x-axis first. So we use um, reminders like you run before you jump, you have to go in somewhere before you go up the escalator um, to help them remember the, to go over first before you go up. So if I'm moving over, I see my A is here, I'm moving over, my dot is not on the whole number one. It's on this middle line right here. So I have to think to myself, what is between zero and one? Well, I know one thing in between zero and one right in the middle would be one half. So that helps me to know that the, my graph is actually moving, or excuse me, it is actually sectioned by halves. So this is half one, one and a half two, two and a half three, three and a half four, four and a half five. So I see that my first dot, uh, point A, is actually on the half line on the x-axis, and then it goes up on the y-axis it is at one and a half because again it doesn't fall on a whole number line so it falls on one of the half lines so this is half and one and a half is where point A falls point B I'm gonna go over it is actually on a whole number line it is on point five or excuse me line five and then I go up and it is also on one and a half just like point A so now I'm looking at point C, I go over, it is on line half, and it goes all the way up, it's between four and five, which I know because I'm counting by halves would be four and a half. So now that I have the points of my um, different letters, A, B, and C, I can analyze it further and answer different questions about it. So example two says, explain how subtraction can be used to find the number of unit lengths the plane at point B is from the airport. So students might say, well, that's pretty simple. I can just look here and see that B is here and I can count my lines over and say B is this far away from A, which is true and that would be an appropriate strategy just to find the answer and to find the distance. But this question asks us to use subtraction to figure out how we could do that. So I really wanna look at point A and the airport, which I know the airport, airport, excuse me, is point A. So I'm going to look at point B and point A and their numbers. I see that their x-axis numbers are different, which makes sense because they are far apart when I'm looking at them horizontally, but their y-axis numbers are actually the same. So I'm looking at how they are different in regards to how far away they are from each other. So in order to do that and use subtraction, I just have to subtract the amounts that are different. I don't want to subtract my one and a half minus one and a half. That would give me zero, and I know that these are not zero distance away from each other, or they would be the same point. So I want to actually subtract five and a half. Five minus one half. All right, and when we talk to students about um, subtracting something from a whole number, it's very important to change that fraction into, or excuse me, that whole number into a fraction to help them with that. So if my denominator is 2 here, I can multiply by 2 on the bottom. Anything I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So now I'm working with 10 halves minus 1 half. My denominators are the same, so they stay the same. 10 minus 1 is 9. And then I would divide 9 um, divided by 2, which would get me 4 and a half. 
Now your student might think, okay, well if I have five of something and I subtract one half away, that's obviously four and a half. And if they can use that mental math strategy to do so, perfect. If not, this is a wonderful way to show all the different steps in order to find that answer. So explain how subtraction can be used, all right? That was what we, what we were talking about earlier when we were trying to decide which numbers to use, all right? To explain that, students could say that they used use the x-axis points to subtract and find the difference. All right, and it's also important to explain why we use the x-axis. All right, so you could say the x-axis was used because both points were different along the x-axis. It would not make sense for us to try and compare the y-axis because the y-axis was the same. Your student will have a question like this on their homework tonight, so make sure that you um, use those strategies with them when you're working with them. Example two says, suppose a point at negative one and three fourths and negative two and one fourth is reflected across the x-axis. Explain how to find the location of the reflected point and then write its location. So I have a four quadrant um, coordinate plane here for us just to kind of get a visual. If I'm working with two negative numbers, there is only one spot where two negative numbers can be. And that would be in this quadrant here, which is known as quadrant three. All right, our quadrants start in quadrant one with both positive numbers. Then they move counterclockwise when you number them to be quadrant one, two, three, and four. All right, students don't have to use Roman numerals to show that, um, but many times in math, Roman numerals are used to show the different quadrant numbers. So I know that this point, negative one and three fourths and negative two and three fourths is going to be in quadrant three, all right? So when I'm looking at quadrant three and thinking about where that point would be, I would go over negative one and three fourths, down negative two and one fourth. So it would be about here. Now remember, the X axis is the horizontal axis, all right? So just remember that that is X. My question asks, suppose that this point is reflected. Reflected just means flipped, okay? It's reflected over the x-axis, so it's reflected horizontally. Well, if I reflected this point horizontally, the points are going to stay the same. The numbers would be the same, but now they're going to change to a positive and a negative, all right? Because it's going to flip over that x-axis into quadrant two. And in quadrant two, I have a one, or excuse me, I have positive numbers on the y-axis and negative numbers on the x. So suppose a point at negative one and three-fourths, um, and that would be the x-axis, negative two and one-fourth, that would be the y-axis. What's gonna happen is it's going to flip over the x-axis horizontally and land in quadrant two, which is going to make the x-axis stay negative because my x-axis in quadrant two is negative, but my y-axis becomes positive. So it's going to be negative one and three-fourths and a positive two and one-fourths. And I know this because, because it tells us to explain, I know this because the x-axis is horizontal So my points would now land in quadrant two. All right, so let's look at the next question. It says, suppose a point at one and a half and negative one and one fourth is reflected across, across the y-axis. So now I'm going to erase the x-axis here and I'm gonna show you quadrant three again just as a reminder, and it says, suppose we have a point one and a half, so that would be positive, over one and a half, 
so about right here, and then negative, it goes down one and a fourth. So really my point is gonna be right about there is where it's gonna live. And it says, what if it's reflected across the y-axis? Well, the y-axis, remember, is my vertical axis. So right now my point is living in quadrant four. It's got an x-axis that's positive, a y-axis that is negative. If it's reflected vertically across the y-axis, it's going to end up in quadrant three at the same spot but now both numbers are negative. So I'm gonna have a negative one and a half and a negative one fourth. All right, and our answer is going to be very similar. I know this because the y-axis is vertical so my point would land in quadrant three. So it is important to remember, as you're talking about this with your student and giving them reminders, the numbers of where the points land does not change. The reflection is going to keep it in the same location, um, or the same numbered location, but it's going to change whether it's positive or negative, depending on what quadrant it falls in and what axis you're reflecting over. If you have any other questions about Lesson 9.7, make sure to see your math teacher.